Hi, welcome to the gameplay video for Warring Kingdom, a deck building and combat game for 2-4 players that's currently on Kickstarter. In this video, you'll see Harry Gao, on the left, the creator of Warring Kingdom, face off against me, Trevor Savage. On the board in front of each player, you can see their castle that they're defending, as well as their deck. On the center, there's a supply that you can buy cards from, including beggars, town guards, warriors, copper, silver, and gold, and traveling merchants that sell armor, weapons, civilians, and other soldiers. Each turn in Warring Kingdom consists of six phases. First, you can perform an action from a card in your hand or one on your board. Next, you get to deploy a, a card onto your board, uh, a unit, in addition to as many equipment as you wish. Then, you can choose to attack another player, in the process deploying as many other cards as you have in your hand to help you in your offense. Then you have to pay for any units that are left on your board. If you haven't attacked, you can then buy, visiting a traveling merchant to look at three of their cards and choosing to either purchase one of those or something from the face-up supply cards. Finally, you discard any cards remaining and draw five new cards. So for my first turn this game, I decide to brawl. Brawl returns two town guards, and in exchange you gain one beggar, and you flip over three cards from the Soldier's Traveling Merchant, gaining the cheapest of them. In this case, that turns out to be an Archer. Archers are great defensive units, but they're also the cheapest soldier. After that, I deploy a Beggar, and use my remaining cards to purchase a Silver. I then draw my new hand, while Harry thinks about what to do on his turn. An average two-player game of Warring Kingdom takes 20 to 40 minutes, and if I remember correctly, this game is no exception. So it looks like Harry's decided to enlist his beggar. He returns the beggar, discards two income, and gains a warrior. He also deploys a beggar, and purchases a silver with his remaining copper and uh, the money from his castle. All purchased units, like Harry's warrior and his new silver, go into the player's discard where on later turns, after they've shuffled the, their deck, they'll be able to draw them to put them into play. I start off my next turn by deploying a unit. I start thinking about deploying a beggar, which are useful to get out of your hand and into places where they can start being cannon fodder, but I instead decide to deploy a town guard. Unlike beggars, town guards are actually useful in offense and defense. Next, I think about my options for purchasing. I've only got three coins left provided by my castle, so I don't actually have a ton of options. However, there are some civilians that are cheap enough that I could purchase them. I take a look at the civilian traveling merchant, but unfortunately I don't end up with any of the cheap ones. So I decide not to buy anything at all. Instead of buying a town guard, beggar, or a copper, which I actually could purchase, but which I didn't think would be very useful. I draw my next hand as Harry starts to move into action. Harry chooses to brawl, returning two town guards, gaining a beggar, and the cheapest of three soldiers. In this case, that turns out to be a veteran, which is a relatively expensive soldier at three coins. Brawl is a very tempting action, since you can potentially gain a powerful card, although at the cost of turning one of your town guards into a beggar, and the risk of gaining something that you didn't really want. Harry deploys another town guard that he has in his hand, and uses his remaining copper to look through the weapons traveling merchant purchasing a card from there. This also goes onto his discard pile, where hopefully his veteran will eventually be able to equip it. I continue the trend by brawling two of my town guards from my hand, returning them, gaining a beggar, and gaining the cheapest of the warriors that the traveling merchant currently offers. In this case, that turns out to be a master warrior, which is actually worth 9 coins, and is actually very useful with an uh, army full of civilians, such as your deck starts out with. So I was quite lucky to get this this early in the game. I then have three coppers, which together with the three coins from my castle gives me six coins. This gives me quite a few options, but I decided to play it safe and purchase a silver to boost my economy. At this point, I've actually run out of cards, so I take my discard pile, shuffle it, and then draw five new cards from my uh, newly shuffled deck. This could include my master warrior, so things might get interesting pretty soon. You can't attack another player until you do have a soldier, so now that we've both got a couple soldiers, things could start to heat up. In the meantime, Harry used his turn to purchase a civilian from the civilian's deck. Civilians provide useful functions that are generally more geared towards helping your economy. On my turn, I deploy another beggar from my hand, continuing to get them out of my deck. And then, with the extra money that I have, 
I buy another silver to continue beefing up my economy. Like in many deck building games, purchasing income helps strengthen your economy for the long run, helping you purchase more soldiers down the line. So I'm investing in silver hoping that they'll help me purchase a bigger army later on. Harry, on the other hand, is using other means to acquire his equipment. In this case, he uses his slave trader's action to sell a warrior and gain uh, some shiny armor. After using his slave trader's action, Harry skips the deploy phase, going straight to buy. He has six coins left over between his income cards and his castle. Now, the veteran soldier that Harry bought earlier gains a lot of defense if you equip it with a weapon. So Harry's going to buy a weapon here. There are a couple options, and Harry decides to pick the javelin. Now while I take a few moments to consider what my next move will be, uh, let's talk a little bit about how the cards are arranged on the board. Each player has a castle, which is on the center of their board. In front of the castle, arrayed in two rows of five columns, are any other units that the player has deployed. Units are generally only attacked by units that are in the corresponding row on opponent's boards. Generally, only units that are in the front row can strike or be struck, although there are exceptions, such as archers, which can attack from your back row to your opponent's front row, and siege engines, which can attack your opponent's back row. One of the useful ways to exploit this is to put your civilians behind other units. At this point, I'm considering purchasing some more civilians to help boost my economy. However, when I take a look at the deck, it turns out that the only one I can afford is the trader. The trader is a very offensive civilian. It's actually an operative as opposed to a villager. Most of the civilians that help you with your economy are villagers. At this point, uh, I, I start to reconsider my plan of going for the economic route, uh, and instead decide to purchase this trader and put it in front of Harry's castle, where it will sabotage his army and uh, prevent him from uh, economically purchasing more soldiers as well. Harry rearranges his board to put the trader in front of his castle, where I'll have to kill it if I want to defeat him. Harry has three coppers, and he eventually decides to use those to enlist a beggar. He discards two of them, returns the beggar, and gains a warrior. Harry has one copper left over after that enlist, and he decides to use it to buy a, another copper. Coppers, of course, aren't very strong, so it's an interesting choice on his part. Harry. At this point, I take a little while to think about what I want to do in my next turn. I've finally drawn the Master Warrior that I gained earlier in the game, and now that the traitor is on Harry's side, preventing his army from being as powerful, I'm considering attacking with it. Since I also already have a significant number of civilians deployed, the Master Warrior is especially useful in this circumstance, since it will boost all of my beggars and town guards and help them defeat the enemy. I decide to go for it, and use my Master Warrior to attack Harry. The Master Warrior provides all the civilians on my field a plus 3 damage on both offense and defense, as long as he's on the front row. In combat, after each player has organized their offensive and defensive forces, uh, the players both roll five dice. These dice determine which of their uh, army's units have attacked. A one indicates that the unit on your leftmost side has struck, a two indicates the unit just to its right, a three your center unit, and so on. In this case, due to his traitor, all of Harry's units deal zero damage, so he quickly realizes that his dice don't have any effect. On my side, one of my, mas my Master Warrior has attacked the center of Harry's line, defeating both the traitor and the beggar behind it. Then my, the beggar on the left side attacks Harry's beggar, and the beggar on the right side does so as well. A 6 indicates a critical, meaning that one of the units has died. I apply this to one of the beggars that I killed. I then decide to discard two income cards to attack again. We roll our dice again, and this time, since I've killed the traitor, Harry's town guards actually have a chance of defending his castle. My beggar attacks four times, taking out his beggar and one of his town guards, and 
Only one of Harry's town guards gets to attack back, killing one of my beggars. Harry's beggar also attacks. However, it has damage of 0, which isn't enough to wound my town guard, which has 5 HP. The net result is that I've knocked out quite a bit of Harry's defenses, while he's only killed one of my beggars and left all of my stronger units intact. This will prove quite useful in later turns. As a defender, Harry got to deploy as many cards from his hand as he wanted. He deployed four cards, which means that this turn he'll actually only have one card to play with, leaving him without too many options. At this point, I feel like I'm in a pretty strong position. I already have a significant advantage over Harry. I know that he doesn't have any offensive units in his hand, most likely, and I know that most any unit that I draw will be able to be used offensively since any of my civilians could be used to bolster my army. Harry, on the other hand, is still looking to bolster his economy. He ends up purchasing a silver and putting it in his deck, shuffling it to draw next turn, uh, instead of buying a soldier that he could have potentially used to help defend against my onslaught. I decide to continue on the offensive, since my hand has some nice cards to bolster my attack, and Harry still doesn't have much out there. I deploy another beggar, and I get ready to roll my dice. I'm feeling pretty lucky, but I still have to wait for Harry to finish shuffling his deck and figure out if he has any more cards to help defend his castle with. Although Harry didn't buy any soldiers last turn to help defend, he does still have that veteran and equipment from earlier in the game. And my only worry is that if he draws both of those, that could be a deadly combination since the veteran has intrinsic defensive properties when equipping weapons. On the flip side, I remember he still does also have that traitor that I added to his deck, which could have quite the opposite effect of the veteran. And there he is. One of the traitor's effects is that as soon as Harry draws him, he has to deploy him and put him to work uh, sabotaging his own defenses. Harry deploys the rest of the units that he drew, bolstering his defenses with the warrior, but it looks like he didn't get the veteran. After he finishes working up his formation, we both roll our dice, and the magic happens. Thanks to my traitor that's out on Harry's battlefield again, none of his units except for his warrior can do any damage against me, and luckily enough, his warrior doesn't actually get to attack, thanks to his dice roll. On my side, my beggar takes out two of his beggars, my uh, beggar on the other side is not able to kill the warrior but then my master warrior and town guard are able to take out both the traitor and the town guard that's hiding behind him. Because I didn't roll any sixes as critical hits, all of these cards are discarded into Harry's discard pile and not returned to the supply. All damage done to a unit to wound it or kill it must be done within a single round. If I hadn't completely destroyed uh, one of these units, next turn it would be good as new. Now I discard two income cards to attack again. Now that Harry's center line is undefended, I feel like I have a pretty good shot. Unfortunately, while my army makes a strong attempt, uh, the beggar and the town guard aren't together enough to defeat the castle, since I ro rolled three sixes, which in this case have no effect. And Harry's town guard is able to take out another one of my beggars. And since he rolled a six, he's forced to kill it, uh, returning it to the supply and not back to my discard pile. Once again, I leave Harry's uh, defenses in ruins while uh, only taking moderate losses on my side. And I again know that he will only have one card to play this turn. It turns out to be a copper, so Harry has three coins after paying one coin for his warrior, which would be enough to buy a town guard. However, Harry decides to take a look at the civilian deck and instead purchases uh, one of the cards from there. Harry is clearly preparing for the long game, which if I have my way, won't even exist, since I'm planning on attacking with my Master Warrior every turn, unless he manages to take it out. This turn I luckily drew the rest of my soldiers, uh, and so I decide not to ease up on the attack. Instead, uh, deploy my Archer and another Beggar, and grab the dice to have another go at it. Once again hoping that Harry doesn't uh, fortuitously draw his uh, Veteran to help def make a last ditch defense. Harry starts deploying some civilians to uh, serve as meat shields, 
and it turns out he did actually draw that veteran, unfortunately for me. However, it also looks like he didn't draw any equipment for that veteran, um, so it actually won't be that useful. Without a weapon or some armor, a uh, veteran is really little more than a powered up warrior. We roll our dice and see what happens. Harry doesn't get a great roll as his veteran doesn't actually get to attack. Uh, instead only his town guard trying to take down my master warrior, but being unable to do anything. My beggar on the other hand, together with the town guard, is able to take out Harry's warrior as well as the slave trader. Harry's town guards start to fall, and I decide to attack again, discarding two more income to help sustain another uh, wave. This time, we roll our dice, and I hope to take out the rest of Harry's defenses. Uh, this time his veteran does get to attack, unfortunately. Um, However, so does my Master Warrior, as well as quite a few of my Beggars, and we each have one critical hit, meaning that some of these units aren't going to be coming back. I take out both of his units, he takes out one of my Beggars and kills it, so it returns to the supply, and now Harry has no defenses, as well as very little cards in his hand, and I still have almost my entire army. However, uh, since I discarded two income to sustain another attack, I can't afford that archer, so I'll have to discard it. I draw a new hand. It turns out that Harry's two cards were some income, which will most likely be too late to help out. However, he does decide to try to get another soldier to uh, eventually help him survive, or maybe even make a comeback. I shuffle my deck, so any of the cards that were wounded in previous battles are up to come out again. I draw some new cards, and I prepare for battle. At this point, my Master Warrior is strong enough that it only needs to attack Harry's castle twice to win me the game. The castle only has 23 health, and my Master Warrior does 12 damage. So depending on what defenses Harry can muster, that could be pretty easy. And I'm confident that Harry's veteran won't show up to save the day, since it's still on the discard pile from last turn. I deployed two more beggars from my hand, which are turned into fearsome warriors thanks to the master warrior that's leading the charge. Harry turns out to only have one beggar this turn, leaving his castle a little bit sparsely defended. I roll my dice, and it, I get a pair of threes, which mean that my warrior, master warrior can take down the castle with the help of that town guard killing the beggar in front of it, thus winning me the game of Warring Kingdom.